going to begin this screencast with this public service announcement. Probably will not play all of it. If you feel you want to watch this in its entirety, just do a search for 1950 Gay PSA, and this usually comes up. Here we go. That looks innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place to another. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon, and he didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. He'd done it a hundred times before, and he didn't think anything was unusual when the driver struck up a friendly conversation. In fact, he seemed like a real nice guy. He asked Jimmy if he played baseball in the park often. Jimmy told him they practiced three times a week and played a rival group on Friday afternoon. The stranger was a good listener, too, and it only seemed minutes before they pulled up in front of Jimmy's house. When Jimmy got to the park on his way home. Sure enough, the following day when Jimmy finished playing ball, well, the man was there waiting. The drive-in, and the stranger treated him to a Coke. During their conversation, he told several off-color jokes. But Jimmy had heard others before, and, well, it made him feel big to so easily... Ralph said it was more friendly. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested, but, well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Notice the reference to sickness of the mind. So let's get into this particular topic here. When I use the term homophile movement, I'm talking about the gay rights movement that was in existence during the 40s and moving primarily into the 60s before Stonewall. And these are the issues that they were concerned with. Atascadero was a state facility that was used for criminals and uh, homosexuals are lumped into that category along with pedophiles other sort of sexual deviants and the question here is whether or not they can rehabilitate homosexuals if you did a google search for a tescadero you probably would find a reference to the dachau for queers dachau is a reference to a nazi concentration camp they're trying to say that at a tescadero there possibly were experiments conducted on homosexuals that are comparable to what happened to homosexuals and other inmates at the Dachau camp. Why is this significant? Because it seems like they're trying to see whether or not they can make homosexuals heterosexuals. And as a result of that, you start to see Harry Hay. Eventually, he forms his organization, the Mattachine Society. And the Mattachine Society was an organization that was concerned with several issues, one of them being entrapment, and another one involving the education for homosexuals as well as the heterosexual population. I'll address this later. Frank Kameni is another Mattachine Society member. This individual led the Washington chapter of the Mattachine Society, and it was important for him as he protested to dress as what he felt was normal for society. He did not want people to associate a gay rights protest with any sort of abnormality. I guess his thought process was, they think that we're weirdos and freaks. We don't want to do anything to confirm that belief. So let's just try to assimilate and dress like society, and let's not try to do anything 
to give the individuals that do not like us any sort of ammunition. Phyllis Lyne and Del Martin, these were two lesbian activists. They would eventually form the Daughters of Belitis, and with the Mattachine Society, they would address issues important for both gay men and gay women. The Daughters of Belitis, according to their mis mission statement, they want to educate the variant. The variant is a term that was used historically to identify lesbian women. They wanted to educate the public. Why? Because the public is probably an exposed education like the one we looked at in the PSA, which is the primary reason why they're trying to educate the public. Another issue impacting the gay community of the 50s and 60s was the practice of entrapping individuals, where you would send police officers into restaurants or bars, nightclubs, and see if you could kind of pick up a male would be under the belief that the two of you are going to engage in any sort of sexual act. Once you can successfully get the person out of the facility, you just arrest them on lewd behavior, which right here. So understand that they're not targeting them for homosexuality. They're saying that they're engaging in lewd behavior. Uh, these are two examples of uh, covers from the Mattachine Society's Magazine One and the latter. Again, both of these magazines were designed to educate society to say, hey, Society says that we're weird. Society is saying that we're abnormal. So these two magazines were designed to try to challenge that particular logic. Eventually, the Mattachine Society would involve, their protests would involve sippins. Sippins were very similar to a sit-in, which was a practice that was uh, conducted by civil rights activists. You would send black and white students into restaurants, and they would sit at counters that were designated for the opposite race and pretty much just see whether or not they were going to be served or not. Whereas in a sip-in, the Mattachine Society, what they would do is they would go into a bar because often certain places had laws that said you cannot serve alcohol to homosexuals and they would just identify themselves. They would say things like, we're here, we're queer, serve us beer and put this individual in a pretty tough spot. Is he going to serve them or not? Understand that if he doesn't serve them, their issue is going to be to sue him. In court, this guy would probably argue he was just following the law. Let's say the law is over here. To understand that they are probably aware of this, they want to take this individual to court so he can use the argument that he's following the law, at which point they would then say, well, we're going to have to challenge the law because we believe that the law is unconstitutional. And again, that was another issue that was addressed by the Mattachine Society. So again, these are some of the issues that they were concerned with, that homophile movement of the 1950s, and that is an umbrella term to describe the gay rights movement of the 50s. Let's move on to the Mattachine, uh, sorry, the uh, Frank Kameni and Barbara Giddings protesting the Psychiatric Association. The Psychiatric Association labeled homosexuality a mental disorder. Understand that this would allow legal discrimination. If you are applying for a job, I could easily say, I'm not hiring you. Not because you're homosexual, I love homosexuals, but really it's because you're, you have a mental disorder and the psychiatric association says so. I just don't think that you are capable of doing the job. So Frank Kameni and Barbara Giddings, along with John Fryer, who is trying to conceal his identity, they are trying to prove to the psychiatric association that homosexuality is not a mental disorder, which is why we started out with that slide with Ralph. They said that he had a sickness of the mind. Again, it's pr pretty much what the Mattachine Society and Daughters of Elitis were trying to do. They were trying to educate society. Mayor Moscone and uh, Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk is the first elected gay politician. And if you were unaware of the story of Harvey Milk, he was assassinated by another elected official who had resigned, this guy being Dan White. He had executed both the mayor and Harvey Milk and argued in court that he had an intake of sugar in his diet that altered his psychological state. So when he conducted the murder, he was pretty much not mentally there. He wound up getting a reduced sentence, serves about five years, and the gay community was really upset and led to what was known as the White Knight Riots. So who's this guy, Harvey Milk? Well, Harvey Milk was an individual who lived in the Castro, which is a de facto segregated community in San Francisco. 
Harvey Milk would gain his political activism early by working with people like Hank Wilson. Hank Wilson organized the Butterfly Brigades. The Butterfly Brigades was an idea to give every gay male in the Castro a whistle. If you were being harassed, somebody was going into the community to try to attack you, you blow the whistle and it was up to everybody else in the community to come to your defense. So Harvey Milk, along with Hank Wilson, um, they definitely seem to be two gay rights activists. And still, these are actually going on in the 70s. It's separate from the homophile movement at that point. Stonewall is over. And uh, Harvey Milk also, also initiated a boycott of Coors Beer. He also challenged people like uh, Anita Bryant, who wanted to save the children from homosexuality, as well as the Briggs Initiative, which was a campaign to try to make it legal for teachers who are homosexual to be fired. A little bit more on Anita Bryant. I just wanted to play this clip here, this protest. Against gay persons when four self-proclaimed homosexuals from Minneapolis interrupted today's proceedings. If we were going to go on a crusade across the nation and try to do away with the homosexuals, uh, then we certainly would have done it on June the 8th after one of the most overwhelming victories in the country. Um, uh, but we didn't. We, we, we tried to avoid it and went into a place called Norfolk, Virginia, and were met with protest and uh, um, all kinds of problems. And uh, uh, every... So that was a protest. Anita Bryant definitely represented the uh, people trying to save the children and try to deal with homosexuals in uh, sort of a discriminatory way, which precisely what Harvey Milk and Hank Wilson and some of the gay rights activists were trying to uh, challenge. Um, so why is any of this stuff important? I know that there is a debate, and if you are not aware, there is an organization called GLSEN. Since 01, they've been tracking school climates. Uh, and basically what their conclusion was that uh, LGBTQ students experience higher rates of suicide. They uh, are usually absent. They're Usually uh, individuals that you can call names and administration possibly would be less likely to punish students for offending such individuals. And this leads to a possible situation where LGBTQ students just do not feel that they are included within the society, which is why you have a high rate of suicide. I always remember the story of James Hubley. Uh, James Hubley was a teen, uh, decided that his life would be better ending um, ended if, he, if instead of being harassed and bullied. I'm not going to focus too much on his uh, note there. Uh, just, you know, just a, a reference to him. So the gay rights summary, just write down your summary. What did you learn? Pause the video. And here are the thoughts that I have come up with. Uh, the Mattachine Society, Daughters of Belitis, two gay rights groups that were part of the homophile movement and what were uh, the issues that they were concerned with would pretty much be these items that are right here. These are some of the gay rights issues that the homophile movement was trying to address.